Hey, what's a human first programming language? Let's take a look at Eve. Hey programmers. So today we're going to take a quick look at the programming language Eve. Now, not to get confused with Eve online, this is actually a programming language. So let's take a look. So this has been around for a while, but I just recently heard about it when a thread on Hacker News got to the top. And it's called Eve Programming Design for Humans. So think of Medium where it's a really easy blogging solution. They've kind of combined the IDE, kind of like a medium type IDE, human readable with a programming language. So it's kind of interesting. If you take a look at it, you can go to witheve.com. And you can see here, they're calling it Eve as a programming language and IDE based on years of research into building human first programming platform. And you, from code embedded in documents to a language without order, it presents alternative take on what programming could be, one that focuses on us instead of the machines. So they have a, some demos. You can kind of explain a little bit. There's a movie, uh, video that you can watch. So let's dive in and take a look how it works. If you want to take a look at this, you can get it on GitHub. It's uh, you can take a look here. It's really easy to install for most platforms, as long as you have Node installed. You can just grab the repository and npm install and npm start. You actually it has a zip file too. There is the quick start tutorial, and if you kind of click around, you can find there's a guide as well which you can use to download the source uh, to download the code for you so I went ahead and did that so here is the code I actually just got the zip file and unzipped it and after I unzipped it I was able to just run it so I already did the npm install I can just do npm start and so we're listening local host 4200 I actually changed the port for my host you can do that by changing the environmental variable for port. And when you do that, you can then bring it up in here. <laughs> so I've already kind of played around with it a little bit to show you what it, what it can do. So here's my quick start guide. I, you can delete it out. And we'll kind of write some of this again. And so the easiest way to think about it is if you look at the syntax references, we have we can create variables, we can create tags, and then since Eve is really good at a certain a few things, if you go all the way down to the front page, it says Eve is what is Eve and is Eve isn't. So it should be good at data stores, grabbing information, data, consider the glue, and the heavy use of graphs. Now right now Eve is really early on in its development, and like it said right here. Right now, Eve won't be good at any of these things. So it's it's more just kind of like a playground. You can't really do a whole lot, but it has a lot of potential. So once you start the server, you're, you're getting in this graphical interface. And like I said, like Medium, you kind of have this markdown. Um, at any time, you can add H1 tags and say hello. Or you can be like this part of the, this is the events. And you can have another part for... Uh, GUI or something like that and they show up in the left hand side and then you can write you can write your text this will be the code that does events and etc and then you can create code blocks you can create code blocks and then you can write your code in here so if we go back to our syntax we know that we can bind let's delete this we can use bind browser and we can add tags and we can have it render stuff to the screen. So, so we can do something like this. You can either use this syntax tag div, or we can just put in div. And we can so hello world. And we can check mark it. So we can run different pieces of code at any time. You see we ran it. Hello world, there it is. Now let's say we wanted to create a variable. So we can go down here, let's create another block. And we can create something like a name. So you use something called commit. This commits data to the system. So I can create a variable called name. And I'll put my name in it. Now you're probably thinking at this time, well, I committed it. So I can go ahead and just use it, right? 
So if I go to bind browser, and I want to create a div tag again, and you can actually you use these um, kind of like handlebars, double like mustaches. You can do name, and we close it. But you'll know it's a, it doesn't know what name is. So it actually doesn't work that. You committed name to the database, but you need to find it. And it does something called pattern matching. So just to make this easier, let's delete this, and we'll create another block of code. And you can see here it outputs on the right-hand side so you know what you're doing. So now I have to do a search. I have to do a search, and then I can put the search name in. I'm going to search for name, and that basically retrieves it and puts in the variable name. So now I can do the bind to the browser. I can use my div tag. And now I can do hello name. And we rerun it. Yep, it says hello Eric. So from here, we created just a simple hello world. Then we did a commit and we committed the variable name. We wanted to retrieve the name, so we just searched for it, and then we brought it up and we could see it. And you can actually create much more complicated events here, or you can create much more detailed blocks of data here and with different variables. So we can do something like, we can create like a student one. We can commit something like a student and maybe student has a name. This is kind of like the example they have in the website. And then a grade. And then I can create multiple of those. And I can create different people. John, Susie, and 11, 10. Now we have all those. Now if we rerun this again, you can see it's since this name is ambiguous it actually grabs it from this student tag too so it's grabbing everything from here and and it displays it here and you'll notice that everything in this program language it doesn't run from the top to bottom it kind of runs all at the same time so even though we did the commit here you could still print it out here and so you can do things like that you can also then go back in with another code and we can search again and if we wanted to get all the information we can search for student name grade and then once again we'll do our div tag um, we'll do bind browser and we'll do our div tag and well you can do sorts on this it has some graphing available too and you can even do inline things your name is at grade grade and we'll end it and we can rerun it and now we can see it it sorted it by the name Eric John Susie and displayed all three and by the way we can uncheck parts of the code we don't want to see so we decide we don't want any of this we can do it and we can rerun it obviously we want to be able to commit things so now we had just these two blocks are running and you can actually uncheck it all the way from here too. So if you didn't want certain parts of code running, it just hides it. But we want to see all of it. So like Eve quick tutorial is kind of everything. So now it only shows in the stuff that's in GUI here and events. And we didn't write any code in there. So you can check mark it again. So this kind of gives you a good way to troubleshoot and to isolate different code that you want to see in the screen when you're looking through this kind of GUI IDE. You can even click this little button here and then click on things and it tells you what it is. It's a tag and the text and has some helpful things to help you try to troubleshoot. So that's my quick how you get started with Eve. Of course, what you'd want to do is to deep dive into this is take a look at the examples, which are quite good. If you go examples, here they've done Flappy Bird. They call it Flappy Eve inside of it. So you see they had a setup, 
and they set up, uh, they committed all these um, tags to the database. And then you can also do pattern matching, so you can look at certain things, and they have a div tag and SVG tags, image tags, and then they have a whole game menu, and then they have score calculation. You can see this is very human readable to understand what's happening. They have like all your comments are in line with it. And you can see your game logic. Here's the code that actually runs. So we click on it, we can see we're actually playing inside the browser. And that's it. And if you die, it gives you a score. And so there's a lot of cool examples like that. So I would suggest if you're interested in this, check out play.withEve.com and give it a shot. And if you like videos like this, you want me to deep dive into Eve a little bit more, leave a comment below. Take care.